Welcome to On The Slab Horror Show with me, Ian the Dynamo Kelly, and the king himself, Mr. Carl King. Whoa. Whoa. Welcome back, Carl. How are you? Hit me, brother. Hey, keep good. I'm really well, man. I'm really, really well. Um, some uh, some nice feedback after last week's show. Probably not at the numbers that we want them to be, so everybody that enjoyed the previous shows, please... Um, Give it a chance. And plus, I think uh, I think where we're at with, with last week's show where we talked about Loftus Hall and Hellfire Club, a lot of people around the world are probably going, whoa, well, this isn't a movie. I don't know, but yeah. check it out. We're trying um, stuff out. We're trying to give you a, a bit of variety with our show. So Different That's, flavor, man. Different yeah. Flavor. But, but, um, we're, we're back to the movies tonight. <laughs> we are back to the movies tonight. And we've actually uh, we've come up with a great movie. Well, Carl's come up with a great movie this week because we do take turns, as you all know. And um, it was Carl's turn this time, and he decided to choose the Silence of the Lambs. Nineteen ninety-one, wasn't it? Yes, it was indeed. Yeah, and uh, uh, it, it's actually uh, well, what what a choice because we kind of chose this today. Yeah, and I was kind of going shit. Do I need to go back and watch that or research it? And then I realized, no, I don't. I'm going to give you a funny little fact about myself. This, do you remember when it's all going to link together and you realize how I was that little bastard grown up <laughs> um, and, and sneaking, sneaking around watching shit? Like I was like Randy Marsh, you know, when he comes <laughs> down during the, uh, <laughs> during the guitar episode. <laughs> and he's like sneaking down the stairs in his white jocks and he's like, yeah, back up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, um, I um, I found this movie, believe it or not, in you know VHS. Of course, found mm -hmm. this movie, and I used to be allowed kind of go up into the to the uncle's room when I was allowed out in the in the parents at the weekend. And again, guys, ladies and gentlemen, when you're watching these shows, you're always going to hear nostalgia with yeah. me and Carol when we talk about this. What because that's what that's what we're trying to do. You may as well call this the video store. <laughs> you know what I mean? We could have called it on the slab video store because that's what we're doing. We're bringing you back to a time that uh, meant a lot to us. And if you like it, if you dig it, great. If you don't, well, look, that's fair enough too. But um, so I found this VHS um, of, you know, Silence of the Lambs and I'd seen it for a long time. And it just, with the whole butterfly over, you know, uh, Clarice's face, I was kind of going, Jodie Foster's face actually. And I was kind of going, I didn't see this. And I watched it and I, you know, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't the better for it. Like I was like, <laughs> what the fuck did I just watch? You're thinking like, what, 12 years old watching this film. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember when I told my auntie and I was like, yeah, like, have you ever seen Signs of the Lambs? And like, where did you see that? And <laughs> I was like, well, here, but uh, it's a great <laughs> film, but... It turned out they were actually kind of okay with it, you know, because there wasn't, there's not much in it in, in terms no. of, it's more of a, a psychological yeah. thriller slash horror, isn't it? Like, yeah. I mean, there's, there's some violence in it, but there's no sexual uh, no, scenes no, or no. in it. Or, it's employed uh, in certain parts of, for the, the yes, but you know, but at a tw as a 12 year old, you wouldn't really be thinking of that, you know what I mean? Um, no. What about you, Carol? Your, your, your first experience with this movie, obviously. Yeah, would have I was been a bit older than me. So bit older than you. I would have been about. I think yeah. I was about fourteen when that came out first. And uh, yeah, what I remember is, see, my mom used to get. You know, do you remember you used to be able to get the the copied uh, VHS la uh, tapes? The lads would go around with the big bag, and you'd pick one out. Yeah, or whatever, yeah, they'd like, come you know? around to the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we got that, and. Again, like it's not a horror per se. It's not. It's not actually classed yeah. as a horror per se. But there's so many horror elements in it, which is oh. why we're including it in our show. And um, yeah, I think so. Oh, it, like again, one of the like all these films that I'm gonna pick out for the next for the foreseeable future anyway are films that left an impact on me and stayed with me for the, for you know for all my life. So, like this one, like everything yeah. about it was just as perfect as you can get for that type of film and for that time as well you know um yeah so we watched it as a, as a 14 year old <clears throat> and with me mom 
because uh, she That's didn't mind watching a few things like that. Now, don't get me wrong, we didn't watch sex things or anything like that, but she didn't mind watch, me watching horror films, you know. Oh, like, sex scenes when you're a kid, you just literally wanted to fall yeah. up into the kids, and you just like, mm, <laughs> yeah, like I watched me first. I watched me first Nightmare on Elm Street and we might as well. So. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Which will be covered eventually. Absolutely. Uh, and also, shout out to uh, Retrotainment who covered it recently. Absolutely. Uh, Greg and Ted, the boys. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of crossovers, yeah, I think, is. with us and them because we're fighting the oh, same fight. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Um, but no, yeah, I feel you with that. I, I, I was the same, as I said. It, for me, it was always me and my granny, believe it or not. I won't believe it, yeah. That was horrors together. And then when I, when I would be out um, in, in in Finglas, I would be, uh, you know, I, I'd be allowed to watch a certain horror or two. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, but anyway, sticking with the with the topic at hand, um, I felt, with this movie, like I say, I remember this movie so well that I didn't need to go and research it. And that's not like, oh, slap on the back to me. It's just, the the impact that I had actually, yeah. and I've seen it that many times since. Like even the way it opens, it opens in a very very dark way in general. There's a very dark feel to this film. I think there's no real uh, breathing room. I think, you know, in certain movies, it gives you a little bit of moment to get gather your thoughts and kind of they might have a comedic element in there or something just to make you feel a little bit better. Just before, <laughs> no, this this is very very dark. Like it obviously it, it's um, it's one of those even when you see. Clarice and she's doing her training at the FBI campus. It's still very grainy and dark. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a very sinister feel I from think, start to finish on this, isn't it? I think um time has aged it. You know the way sometimes like films don't age well. I think I know where the, you're going. The, yeah, yeah, I think the aging of this film adds to the atmosphere of it. And again, I yeah, only watched too. it today again because I, I love it. And I had the whole house to myself. And I watched the film on my own, no distractions, and it was class. Again, just watching it again and, you know, the little parts that I know and all this kind of stuff, you know. But, uh, yeah, I was just like, and I, 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 I uh, got an even bigger appreciation for another character who we'll chat about later on. But we'll just, like, we'll start as we're starting, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... It- it, it, it's it's kind of like it's 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 a slow burn but it isn't i mean like in the sense yeah. of clarice is kind of the open comer um and um now with names you're gonna have to help me here with it because that's that's where i've, I've kind of uh that's where my research didn't come into play but i don't really need to know the names no. per se to know the characters but her boss basically jack crawford yeah exactly he knows that she's she's got potential you know what i mean and she's i mean i i think jodie foster was a very underrated actor too actually personally Um, and she's she's kind of very very all about the job career woman and it starts i'll I'll, I'll hand this over to you now because it starts where you know she's looking at murder cases and stuff like that and um you know it's not people expect it to just automatically be about Hannibal Lecter, but it's really not. No. It's, it's, it's more about this, this killer Buffalo Bill yeah. that she hands over. And I know you want to talk about Big Buff, so uh, uh, Buff's I'll hand this stuff. over to you. <laughs> um, One of the best heels in movie history. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, that's it. Like, I want to just kind of give a special mention to Ted Levine, who played Buffalo Bill. And because, oh, great actor. Yeah, everybody... I mean, I think... Anthony Hopkins was on the screen for 16 minutes or something like that. But if you look at everything that Ted Levine does in that film as James Gunn, he is spot on. He did his he did his homework to the to the very very point, and it, it's it's a joy a joy to watch, I suppose you could say. But just everything he does, I mean, he went. He's got that and, voice, you know, oh, that voice, oh, man. And, and I wouldn't yeah. mind, like he was saying, cause, like I was reading up there, obviously, he went to some bars to look at transsexuals and gay people, gay guys, and to try and get a feeling for, like, you know, what, what James Gunn was like. Also, some serial killers as well. Uh, James Gunn was, or, well, Buffalo Bill is based on um, a couple of serial killers, of course, uh, 
but we'll we'll just say the main ones: Ted Bundy, Ed Gain, and Gary Hydnick, who used to uh, you know kidnap women and do all sorts of shit. Yeah. And of course, the I skin. always had a feeling. I always had some weird kind of thing that he had like an affiliation with John Wayne Gacy, but that's that's actually nice to. to well, I don't mean it's nice to hear, but it's actually I know what you mean. Something yeah, something that I didn't uh, I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's cool for me. So, I mean, to think that, I mean, you've got to think of it as well. 90, 1990, 91 or whatever, all that serious kind of stuff is really just hitting the hitting at that stage. I remember in those days reading about like my, one of my aunts had a true crime, you know, magazine. Um, I remember those yeah. books. Remember, you'd get them. They, they used to come free sometimes with yeah. like the Sunday World or something, yeah. and they'd be like a little tiny little book, yeah, mm. paperback. Well, so yeah. so like I was reading about some kind of serial killers from that at that time, and I remember hearing about these guys. But seeing how uh, Buffalo Bill is portrayed, it's one of the top kind of killer performances. I'm gonna say. That I've seen now, of course, Anthony Hopkins. We will talk about him further on in the in the show, but I just wanted to give a special mention to uh, Buffalo Bill. I just thought, uh, you know, <clears throat> absolutely top notch as a villain. Yeah, and like very, very real. Like even the scene yeah. where, like, he's asking your one, "I need help with my couch." You, you know, were, are you a want... size sixteen? <laughs> Yeah, and then boom, like oh, very, fucking, very. It's what you don't see, but you, it's very dark, man. Very yeah. fucking dark. Yeah, but very real. Do you know what I mean? Like this is this is the killer that's real here. Like this isn't, you know, Jason coming out of the swamp. Oh, kind of deal, and or, again, it's, yeah, the one word you'll find running through our show every week is atmosphere. It's yes, atmospheric yes. journey. That oh. It's a terrifying journey, to be fair. Yeah. I don't know how it's not classed as a horror, to be honest with you, because this is the movie, I think, that literally, if I'm being honest, that literally terrified me the most, especially when we get to the end, and but we will get to that. Yeah. Um, it, 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 is, it is a thriller, but it is also a yeah. horrific a, thriller. A horrific thriller. Um, Very well, Paul. You know what I mean? Um, I think when we start to kind of see Clarice getting involved in this case and you can see her, you know, she's trying to make a name for herself here yeah. in this whole deal. And, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's fresh in your mind. So it's been, it would be apropos for you to kind of guide us through when she first kind of understands and learns of Hannibal Lecter himself. Yeah. I mean, of Dr. course, Hannibal Lecter. Dr. Dr. Lecter, uh, yeah. Jack Dr. Crawford, Lecter. of course, he has had Dr. Picked. Lecter. Dr. Lecter. Yeah, I hear a voice in this. <laughs> Go ahead now. She's, almost, she's like uh, Jim Ross's daughter or something, you know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, I have to give a side of me mouth to do it. Shout out my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Jim Ross. We love Jim Ross. We but do. anyway, um, <laughs> of course, Jack Crawford has, has handpicked her for this job. Uh, and it's basically... I mean, he knows that Lecter's going to know why he brought a young girl in there. Rookie. And, a rookie. And it's, it's, a, it's a mind game between Lecter and Crawford. Uh, of course, he brings in, as you said, a rookie. And Hannibal Lecter, he barks at the idea that he sent in a rookie to, to talk to me, you know. And um, the back of she's such a strong woman, female character. Yeah. You know, she has to be one of the strongest female characters in, in Hollywood, in movies. Absolutely. Um, I would agree with that. So yeah. strong and so determined and not not put off by Hannibal Lecter. I mean, let's talk about the first time she meets Hannibal Lecter. That has yes. to be one of the most chilling and uh, introductions to a character in movie history ever. And I will say that as well. Like, he's standing there with his hands behind his back. And he just turns around and without having to have any kind of makeup on, without having to have a scary face, it's listen, this is this is just you you mentioned that Anthony Hopkins is only in the movie for 16 minutes. There's a reason he steals the show. Yeah. Like, you know, a, a, a true great like that doesn't need any more than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. His whole presentation of this character 
is just spine tingling. I think oh. that's the only word that I can actually use yeah. because he's like, you know, hello, Clarice. You know, it's just so goddamn it calm. It's calm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But but the eyes are just constantly open. He doesn't blink. That's something you notice. He doesn't blink. You well, know? that's funny enough. Um, he used that. That's actually a trait that he used from from reptiles, because mm. reptiles can blink when they want to. Believe it or not. So yeah. uh, he used that. You know that kind of trait from 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 reptiles, and just to make it more cold, make it more you know chilling. Absolutely, yeah. spot on. Spot yeah. on. Unbelievable, like, and, and the back and forth between these two, like, I mean, it's so believable. Yeah. You believe it. And he's uh, he's obviously trying to do a profile on her as she's trying to do a profile on him. And obviously he's one step ahead of her every time. Always. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always one step ahead of her. But at the same time, she's holding her own in this, you know? For, for a rookie, uh, she does really, really well. <laughs> Unbelievable. And like, you know, there's some kind of sick scenes in it, like, you know what I mean? When she's walking down towards Hannibal. And like, oh, she gets, oh, Jesus, she gets certain. She gets some man, man on juice her. on her face, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Disgusting. Um, <laughs> it's actually fucking disgusting. Yeah, as a kid, I didn't know what that was. They were just saying, ah, mm-hmm. it's sour cream. Don't worry about it. Sour cream probably was. Uh, I was like, ah. Makes well, cream. Doesn't look like that, but, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, she keeps it together yeah. for during Malda, and then when she gets out, she has a little cry at the car. And that's uh, apparently the, the FBI agent that she was, you know, kind of shadowing told her that was what she would do if she forgot too much for her. She'd go out to her car, specifically her car, and not go into an hour at night, just stand at it and cry. So yeah. she used, I mean, the, I mean, what I love about this whole film is the FBI were so cooperative with the making of it yeah and um, because uh they, they they were looking at it as oh we might get some you know females in more female officers in you know or whatever but the fact that they were so cooperating cooperative sorry uh made it more realistic i think yeah because it did feel like a real uh, a, re- a very very genuine kind of um i suppose outlook on what daily life would have been in a case like this, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I don't know. I just, I just thought, and obviously, with the whole kind of Hannibal trying to get kind of her background with with the lambs and how he's getting into her head and and her acting in this is just absolutely oh. phenomenal. She's like, like he's taking her there and she doesn't even yeah. realize it. Like, do you know what I mean? And when he starts slagging her accent and everything, doing her, you know, like, mommy and your daddy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, That's mommy really, and the daddy. Really getting to her, you know, and but she holds her own. She yeah. gets the first kind of bit of inter, inter, interactions with him out of the way because they're obviously going to try and ask him to help locate Buffalo Bill, who's the main yes. killer. He's the main antagonist in this, not... No, well, that's it. It's to get a profile on Buffalo Bill. Well, I mean, and, he's profiling her, but the whole thing is to get a profile on Buffalo Bill. And yeah. obviously, he does start getting a profile on Buffalo Bill. Um, you know, as I said, we're not doing a step by step of the movie, no. but when 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 he starts kind of talking about it and he gives her the the location, um, clues all the time of his own storage locker, and she breaks into that, and you see the bits and. Like that, the cops don't even know about. Basically, I think I'm right yeah. in saying, don't I? Yeah. Like there's bits of brain and everything in there, and a severed head in there, and um, I think Bill had the rest of the body or something like that. But yeah. um, <laughs> it's uh, like even seeing that kind of stuff is dark. very yeah, it's very dark, you know. And fun fact, oh well, fun. I think I think the head looks like uh, Sylvester Stallone if you look at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he wouldn't um, have been getting him. No, he wouldn't. No way. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I have to yeah. say, yeah, um, it was, like, Jonathan Demi is the producer. And uh, Tom, if, I know, I'm presuming you know, they're based on books by a chap called Thomas Harris. Yeah. yeah. And he was, he didn't want to get involved 
in any way, but he wished them all well, which is yeah, that's that's all you can ask for, really, isn't it? Because I, I I've seen the likes of uh, films like The Watchmen, and Alan Moore just totally distanced himself from the film. Wouldn't even wouldn't even like give it his, his blessing. He was so disgusted with it. So well, same with same with John Carpenter and the Halloween stuff, but that's rightly so. I absolutely, think. absolutely. Yeah. No, no disrespect to Rob Zombie. I think he's a great, uh, no, great he, director in his own right. But you just know, to making he, your own films, yeah, and and his own films were successful. Yes. You know what I mean? So you know what I mean. But uh, I think um, I think the more we get into this, I mean, one thing that stood out for me in this movie is obviously when Lecter's getting transferred. You know what I mean? He goes, mm-hmm. "I want to see, the, I want to see the sky. I want to see the sea." I want to be able to see out a window. I want a view, you know? <laughs> and it's, um, Jesus, I was better at doing that than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, but it's just, it's it's like he's, he, you see, it's almost like there's a human element in there. Mm-hmm. And you're going, shit, this is what he wants. You know what I mean? So he wants to get out of this little hellhole that he's yeah. fucking. Or could he just in. be, could he just be, again, playing everybody? Oh, well, well, that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. That's exactly what he, he doesn't give a fuck about a view or a window. He's like, he sees this as an opportunity. And good Lord, why don't you talk about Carol? The opportunity. When he does get it. Oh my God. <laughs> so he makes he gets, art out of this human being. Like, oh, I mean, he's talking to the Dr. Chilton. Or the Dr. Chilton's yeah. talking to him there. And he's it, such a little weasel yeah. bastard in it as well, isn't little, he? Like, little doorbell yeah. he is, yeah. But, um, yeah. He goes and makes it. We're, we're skipping through a lot of the film. I'm, sh- I'm sure people will watch it. As you said, Ian, we're not doing a synopsis. We're not doing shot by shot. No. So, anyway, we're at the 30 point. 30 minute where, episode. You can't yeah, do a whole rundown of the movie yet. You get to a point where um, Chilton makes his own deal with the, the governor whose daughter is missing. That's the daughter, the girl who is in uh, Buffalo Bill's place that we see in the film, right? So. She meets, make, she organizes a meet up with Hannibal. He's in, in the infamous uh, mask and the stretcher thing, and he starts talking normally to her until he starts kind of saying stuff about the daughter, and uh, he just, whatever way he do, he's able to get the, it's like a pen or a, a, a clip, and he yep. gets it into I don't know how, but he gets it in his mouth. This man's a genius, and he's also, believe it or not, um, he has he's very strong. Uh, he has great physical strength, even though he doesn't look like it. So just that'll come in to, into play later, right? So natural wiry kind of strength, exactly. yeah, right. So of course that whole thing goes haywire. So he has to go back to the, to the he's going to the hole and kind of kind of cage where they have him, and the two p- cops are kind of nice to him, and. Um, but when he goes in, when they go in to, to feed him, then later on in the cage, he's able to unlock his handcuffs and just smooth as you like. What about his face when he's doing it? And he's just like, ah, oh, he's again. It's just it's all it's killing. all the visual with with, with yeah. Anthony Hopkins in this. It's those I mean, eyes. It's those. I always. think it's one of the best performances of all time, personally. Of all time. Um, and the, without without a shadow of a doubt. And of course, don't forget, he wasn't the first one to play Hannibal Lecter. Brian Cox was Hannibal Lecter in Manhunter. And I mean, up until that point, he was a perfectly fine uh, Hannibal Lecter, but yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. This, when, and I, I mean, yeah, that's probably, this is probably my favourite part of Lecter, is when he just, you see him, with, and he's all in white. And that was, that was done on purpose, because uh, Lecter thought, people's fear of, or sorry, Hopkins taught people's fear of doctors and dentists would make him all in white look more intimidating. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, And when he starts, when he oh, starts slashing, getting, like his face, it, it, and this is the great thing, his facial expression doesn't change. Mm. It's like, in his mind, it reminds me of the artist with the brush. Yeah, that's you know, it. It's like, it's just wailing away on your man with the with the billy club, and he's just smashing his face in. And and yeah, do you remember the bits of blood coming on? He's like, <sighs> it's, it's it's amazing. It's so aggressive, yeah. but like not refined I aggression. Think only, I think the only thing that I've ever seen, like in a movie, where it, it looked 
as real someone baiting the bollocks out of someone. Like, by just looking at their facial expression, was Goodfellas with Robert De Niro. Oh, when he's yeah. Kicking the guy on the, remember, he's kicking the guy on the ground? Yeah. And you see Robert De Niro's mouth going like that. Yeah. Like, do you, for anyone that's out there watching that, I guarantee you we're going to get a comment on that. <laughs> Go back and watch that scene when De Niro is going like that. Like, he has his tongue, like, yeah. as if it's 100% concentration. Concentration, yeah. And he's like, you know, and all you see is the boo. You know, and I think this is the exact same yeah. with Anthony Hopkins. You're absolutely. just looking at his face while he's oh. absolutely bludgeoning this guy yeah. to to a mess. And of course, he he gets he I don't I don't know how he does it in such a quick space of time, where he basically cuts your man's face off, covers him up, puts the other fella up in the fucking vents in the lift, <laughs> and then fecks off. He puts your man's face on his. And goes out as one of the injured he's cops. Venom. Yeah, he's he's like Venom, yeah. But he goes out, and then of course you see the medic fella talking on the radio, and he just sits up and pulls the the skin off, and it's and it's oh, kind of a like that. Geez, what a fucking it, scene! Amazing, 10, 15 minutes or whatever of cinema, absolutely brilliant, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, so that's him gone. Out of the film. Oh, that's it. That's He's it. gone. So, yeah, yeah, your award winner's gone now, you know what I mean? So now you've got to, to deal with uh, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> and good Lord, another award winner comes in on this too, in Clarice, and she absolutely steals the show here yeah. from the rest of the, the movie. Uh, I don't know whether she steals the show from Hannibal, but I would, do you know what? It's, as, it's, she's it's, as good of, as... Good as She's bad. as good as in different in different ways. I mean, yeah. good lord, for her to be, you know, the baby face in this, like to be the, the to be the good girl, uh, yeah. and kind of the um, and and you can see that she's still in training. Sorry for cutting across you there. No, you're right. You can see that she's still not fully a hundred percent graduated. You can actually the way she portrays the character is fantastic. You can see there's a, there's a hint of trepidation. There's a hint of vulnerability. Yeah. 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 And it's just, you know, like, I mean, at that final confrontation with Buffalo Bill, like, you could, it's just a reaction. She's just lucky that she reacted well, before him. I wanted to say that when they go, like, I mean, this, this is amazing story writing, actually. When it comes to whether they think they have the right house or not, the whole FBI yeah. think that they have the fucking house, and it turns out it's not. It's it's empty as fuck. Whereas Clarice has obviously got the information from Hannibal. Yeah, and she's she's kind of well the information that she's kind of accrued from Hannibal has led her here, and she's basically calling it in. It, yeah. it, this is where we are. So they kind of they kind of know where to go. Then they're like, shit, we got to go and get <laughs> Clarice, and she has the balls and the stones to go in anyway. Yes, yeah, and. This whole deal, man, this is what I meant about still to this day one of the most terrifying scenes yeah. um, in, in, in movie history, in my opinion. Absolutely. Because obviously he switches the lights out eventually. You know this motherfucker's down there. Yeah. It goes to him because he's like a wolf down there, isn't he? Oh, he's he's sure. And you're kind of going, oh, shit. Because I was, I was always a Hannibal fan. I know that sounds weird. No, <laughs> I it's like, you. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Oh, yeah. yeah, let's get this weirdo. Yeah, you know, he was. I oh, was always, I, I love Hannibal, obviously, but I was always more in, in fascinated by Buffalo Bill. Just well, that's because, as you said, it's the protagonist of, of, the, of the movie. Um, yeah, well, let's let's go to that scene then when, when the lights go out. Um, is that not one of the most terrifying things ever? Oh, absolutely. Purely because of how Jodie Foster is acting it as well. Yeah. And you can hear every breath. And she's and afraid. The, oh, my God. Like, the fear resonates. And just when he goes to touch her hair and all, and it's just like, oh, quick. You're like, oh, my God. This is it. This is it. Like, it's, it's over. <laughs> and, you know, she ends up getting him kind of almost by luck. Yeah. Just, as you said, reflex and bang. You know? Which brings you back to the start of the film, is that she was a great shot and her training yeah. was great. 
Yeah. But this is on-field training now. And this is real life. And you're like, yeah, oh. I mean, you're talking about a, a, a major, major serial killer here that she's gone up against. Um, yeah. And, I mean, not that it makes a difference, but the size of the gun that he bleeding had, you yeah. know, compared to her little handgun, you know, like when he had a handgun, but it was like a big kind of dirty Harry toy thing, you know. And uh, but she was just so lucky to, to to get him. Another thing that we skipped over, um, and I, that was probably my fault because I'm getting too overexcited about the bloody thing. <laughs> the little uh, death heads moths. Yes. Very symbolic in the film, of course, and yeah. that was what gave it away for Clarice when she was in James Gum's gaff and she saw the little death head moth flying around. Yeah. And that's what then she knew she was with him, you know, and she yeah. was oh again, like you like you say, it was breathtaking. I was again watching it only today, and I know knowing exactly what's gonna happen. And I'm still like <gasps> not afraid, nothing like that, but just like, oh quick, watch, watch out, watch out. You know, I was yeah, just anxiety more yeah. so. You're like, yeah. So happy watching it, like you know, like as in it's enjoyment. You know, knowing uh, how how I'm gonna feel, you know, it's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you want to be scared and you want to get to that moment, but you want to be on the journey. And I think that's yeah. what I think that's the whole premise of this show. For example, for people that want to watch this show, it's like yeah. taking you on the journey just to give you a bit of nostalgia, a little bit, and then maybe go back and watch it yourself, or even to put it in your head of going, oh, yeah, yeah. "I am gonna get around to watching this. I'm gonna yeah. get around to watching it." And it's um it's one of those movies, man. Like because obviously she gets the you know she gets the nod at the end and she gets the you know the approval basically she yeah. gets the medal of honor kind of deal going on and and the graduation at that as well. So she yeah, gets it all. Absolutely, she's one of the top yeah. then. But and isn't she gets, she gets the call? Yes, from himself. Which I was just gonna say, isn't that one of the coolest endings to a film? Just him walking off and oh yeah every time i watch that film blending into society oh, yeah. like a chameleon man it's amazing but every time even even today like so i've done this since i was a kid you see him walking off and i try and look and see how far away i can like i just try and keep keep focusing on him it's just something i've always done with that film and even yeah. did it today you know so it's yeah because the camera zooms out and you're kind of going yeah there he and, is in there and the music and all, and the, like, there's another thing. Um, the guy who made the film was Ed, Edward, sorry, Howard Shore. It's a fantastic soundtrack, you know. Yeah. And uh, just again, move uh, music. Horses, obviously, is the is the team that. Well, that's would, yeah, that's the one from we the dancing scene. <laughs> yeah. Hard for Hard for me. Hard for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a brilliant! Yeah. Well, I'm going. Do you know what? I, I'm going to tell you some fun facts now, if you want, if yes. you, if you like. And I have a little list list here, Bri. Um yeah. And of course, Silence of the Lambs was the third film to win the Big Five Oscars. All right. Um, I can't remember the fourth one, but uh, One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest was another one, and then it was that it's one. There. So you're talking about pick the best picture, actor, actress, director. A screenplay, so like just, just I don't know I, I don't know if there's any other films that have done that since I'm sure I'm sure if there is someone will tell us but like we're not looking at other films we're looking at this so <laughs> you know yeah. so well, I think I've said earlier on Michelle Pfeiffer was originally what was that originally desired to play Clarice but uh, she wasn't too hot on the, the, how dark the role was so um uh. Jodie Foster got it in the end. And I'm glad she did because as much as Michelle Foy was a good actress, she would not have... No, when you, when you know what you know now and you see her, her other performances in other films, as in Michelle's, I still think Jodie Foster would have been the right choice. You know? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. So, do you know who the... I guess, see if you know this one. Do you know who the first choice for Hannibal Lecter was? No. Sean Connery. Oh, good Lord. And he turned it down because he thought that the script was revolting. 
And I'm glad oh, he did. He did, yes. He did, yes. <laughs> I ate his liver with some nice candy. I'm the ante and his father of these. Exactly. I, I gotta say, it's not really my scene. <laughs> hello, hello, Clarice. It's good to see you. Clarice. <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> So thankfully he didn't get it. Well, he didn't want it. So, um, <laughs> of what, course, does, uh, what does what what does Sean Connery do after finishing a bit of DIY? Go on. He takes a step back, and he says to himself, "I'm very proud of myself." Oh, <laughs> it's a dad joke. A dad, dad jokes. We should do a whole episode of dad jokes. No, we're, <laughs> we're not. I'm joking. <laughs> Never. Here's another cool thing about uh, Hopkins. He, for the voice of Hannibal Lecter, he used Truman Capote and Catherine Hepburn as the influences to get that oh. voice, which is an interesting mix. If you listen to the two of them, you're like, oh, Jesus, yeah. And he also used, you know, Hal, the computer from uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's and you can hear and see that as well. I think if Hal was a person, it'd be Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastically. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Uh, oh, yeah. Ted Levine, who was Buffalo Bill, when he did that that dance scene, you know, the would you fuck me, would fuck me, um, that wasn't meant to be, that wasn't in the screenplay, but it was in the book, and he fought to get that into the into the actual film, and then he had to take. He was saying, he apparently he had to, he was, he had to load up on tequila before he did it, because he's in the buff, you know, man. And uh, he's not, Tucks I don't, in. yeah, oh, well, he tucks it in, doesn't he, a car, dirty feck, I look. <laughs> so as I was saying, uh, Lecter's only on screen for 16 minutes. And mm -hmm. there's only one other person that was on screen for less that won an Oscar, and that's David Niven. And that was for, I can't remember the film, but it was like 15 minutes or something like that, 15 and a half minutes. So... I mean, that's to be able to win an Oscar for that short of a time of a performance is amazing when you think about it, really. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so at a car that made $272.7 million in the box office. So that's not a bad chunk of change. Didn't do too bad. <laughs> no. You know, so, and, and, and of course, uh, Jonathan Demi. Fair play to him for the, the making and, and the way he made it as well. So without without that vision, you know, we, put, we, we probably would have got another film like Manhunter, which it wasn't bad, but wasn't this. No. You know? no, no. So Definitely. there's my nerdy little tidbits for you. I like that. <laughs> I like that. It's something, um... you know. No, that that that's it. Like and, and like to be fair, it's great when you go back and watch these movies. As I said, like our our kind of aim for this is to kind of give people a little bit of nostalgia and to give our own nostalgia and our own yeah. kind of viewpoints on, on on how we saw the film. I would uh, I suppose now it comes to the time if you were to give it the on the slab rating. Right. Okay. It's a very hard one to, to rate in a sense of I hate rating things anyway. This is yeah, your idea. So. I don't. Well, <laughs> I'm going to give it... Well, I, I'm, see, when I like a film, I love a film. I'll, I'll defend it to the end, you know. Um, I'm going to give it four and a half slabs of meat. I'm going to give it five and a half. Five and a half slabs. Five and a half? Even though there is only five. You're going to cut a pound, of, a pound of flesh off yourself? Yeah, for the movie that it is, like it's hard to fault it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? There's nothing in it that doesn't make sense. There's nothing in it that, like, you kind of go, "Oh well, that shouldn't have happened," or "That's hokey." Mm -hmm. it's so difficult not to. I'd yeah. say, even realistically, you're trying to be nice there, and you're trying to not just give a five. I would say you would give a five, a hundred percent. Yeah, I probably would actually. So, you know what I mean? Like, there is literally nothing wrong with this movie. No. It, it's crazy. And it's, it's the perfect running time as well. It was like, I was, I thought it was a longer film than it was. It was, it was like a, an hour and 58 or something, something like that. And I was yeah, just like, yeah, that's perfect, like, you know. 
So yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll go with a five. If you go with a five, I'll go with a five. Yeah, I'll go forget, with a five. Forget yeah. about your extra sliver of meat. I was just trying to bring you up to a five with the extra sliver there. <laughs> it's gonna be you know, that's all right. We got you to where we yes. need to be. <laughs> so son no, of the lambs on the slab with five slabs of meat as a rating for us. And I mean yeah. it's the perfect way to to rate that film. And I think it's the perfect way to end tonight's show. Absolutely. And uh, if you've enjoyed the show, please do like and subscribe and uh and basically give us all the love on the Dynamo Podcast Network. And um, we have everything that you need from sports to this. Um to Whatever this is. as well. And you know, to this, what we're doing right now, we're throwing slabs of meat around. <laughs> At each other in a minute. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, so I think please give us a like and a, a subscribe on the Dynamo Podcast Network. Um, hit the bell notification for notifications anytime a video of interest will pop up for you. And please, please, please do comment on uh, on our shows because it, it's it's going to help us get feedback and also build a relationship with you guys and girls out yeah. there. So, um, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's an opportune time to tell them what we've got for them next week. And it is my turn next week. And just to give you a little bit of uh, of an idea behind this it does involve a shark and it is from the year 1975 and not the modern shit so until yes. uh, until next week i've been in the dynamo kelly and i've been he, king woe well. and we are on the slab and we are out of here adios hang on now <laughs>